Hello, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're going to do an example for shear and bending moment diagrams. This is an example 7.1 coming from Hibbler's Statics book. In this example, we're asked to determine the internal forces acting just to the left of point B and just to the right of point C in the beam shown. Let's look at this beam and figure out what we're being asked to find. This beam has an external loading of six kilonewtons that's applied in between points B and C. It also has a coupled moment that's applied of nine kilonewtons times meters. And you know, coupled moments, they exist anywhere along the beam, but it's drawn over point D. We're also given the dimensions of this beam and we can realize or notice that we have a uh, rocker support at A and a pin support at D. Now we're asked to find the internal forces that arise just to the left of point B. So as if we were to section our body just to the left of point B. And what are the internal forces that arise when we're just to the right of point C? So this is asking us to do two method of sections, one to the left of B, one to the right of C, and then find what are the forces that are exposed when we do the sections. Pretty simple, let's get started. If we analyze this problem, starting with our uh, constraint locations, we can replace those constraints with reactions and we'll find an AY and a DY reaction are going to develop. We also can put all of our knowns here, the, the loads that are externally applied and the dimensions, and then we can craft a free body diagram where we free the body from its constraints, simplify it down to the bare bones and replace those supports here with the actual reactions AY and DY. In this equation, it's 2D, as we know that we have up to three equations and we have two unknowns. So let's apply the equations of equilibrium and we can solve for those two unknowns. We'll start here with the sum of the forces in the Y direction and we'll end up with AY uh, plus DY minus the six kilonewton load is equal to zero. And then we can do the sum of the moments. And in this case, we're going to do the sum of the moments about point D. But we could choose another point if we wanted to. But we, we did the sum of the moments about point D. We're going to take each of the forces that will create a sense of rotation, find their moment arms, and give their sense, positive or negative, to create this equation. The first one we, we have here is this 6 kilonewtons. It's going to cause a counterclockwise sense of rotation and its moment arm are these six meters. So we'll do positive six kilonewtons times six meters. And that now we've got the moment for that term. The next one we'll do is AY. AY is going to create a clockwise sense of rotation and its moment arm is three plus six, so nine meters. Since we've got the sense, we're going to put a negative sense because it's clockwise. The value of AY times those nine meters. Okay. And the last thing we'll do is we're going to add our coupled moment that is applied to this beam. Now, coupled moments, they act anywhere along the beam. This one is drawn over point D, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to add that directly to our moment equation. It's counterclockwise, so plus 9 kilonewtons times meters. Close that, set that equal to zero. All right. So now that we've got our equations written up here, if we look closely at these equations, we see we have two equations and two unknowns, so we can very quickly solve for those unknowns. If we take the second equations and rearrange it, we can find AY is equal to 5 kilonewtons. If we plug that into the first equation and rearrange it, we'll find dy is equal to one kilonewton. So now we've 
done all the front matter stuff. We know the value of our reactions. Now we can actually get into solving this problem. And that's where we're going to apply the method of sections. We're going to apply this method of sections twice. The first section is going to be a section of member AB or, or a section from A to B. So we put a uh, point for point A, a point for point B, and we'll put the three uh, meters across here. And then we're saying that we're sectioning at that point, right? And that is just to the left of point B. It also happens to be just to the left of that six kilonewton load that's applied to the member. So with that uh, being said, when we do this section, we expose internal forces and moments. And we get a internal normal force. So this, this force here, an internal shear force, and as well, an internal bending moment. Now, all three of these um, internal forces and moments, we're going to label them as sub, uh, subscript B. So that tells us that that's the first section that we did. Those are the first values, right? Then we'll make another free body diagram where we section the body. But this time, we're sectioning the body just to the right of point C. So we're actually taking the body just to the right of that point C. And in this diagram, the six kilonewton load, it actually appears. It actually appears in that diagram, right? By doing that section, we are going to expose internal forces and moments. So we're going to get an internal, we're going to get a normal force, a shear force, and a bending moment. And we're going to describe those with subscript C to indicate that we're just to the right of point C, right? So now we have two free body diagrams. And in each of these diagrams, there are three unknowns, a normal force, a shear force, and a bending moment. And they're 2D equations, so we know we have three equilibrium equations that we can solve. So let's, so let's do that. Let's take this diagram and create equations of equilibrium for it. We can start with the sum of the forces in the x direction, which will be the normal force B equal to zero. So normal force B is zero. It has no value. Then we'll do the sum of the forces in the y direction, uh, AY minus VB. We can solve and we'll find that uh, the shear force is five kilonewtons. And then we can do the sum of the moments. Here we're going to do the sum of the moments about point B. Uh, so we'll get the moment B uh, minus the AY times the, the moment arm of three meters. We rearrange and we'll find the moment at point B, where to the, just the left of point B is 15 kilonewtons times meters. All right. So we figured out the internal forces and moments just to the left of B. Now let's do the same thing for just to the right of C. Let's take that diagram that we have and let's create equations of equilibrium for it. If we do the sum of the forces in the x direction, the normal force is equal to zero. If we do the sum of the forces in the y direction, we'll find that the shear force VC is equal to negative one kilonewtons. And if we do the sum of the moments, we'll find that the bending moment to the right of C, the MC, is equal to 15 kilonewtons times meters. And so if we look at the results, we've, we've solved this problem, we look at the results and we compare the internal forces and moments that develop between those two locations, we can see that the magnitude of the internal shear force has changed between those two points. It's moved from five kilonewtons to negative one kilonewton. That is equivalent to the magnitude of this six kilonewton load, this shear load that we're applying through our body. So that means on, on one side, the shear force is a certain amount. And then as we add an external shear force, the internal forces change due to that external shear force.
All right. So we've solved this problem. We figured out how to analyze the internal forces in members. We didn't create uh, a shear force or bending moment diagram yet, but let's look for those in the next videos. All right. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Click all so that you can get all the example videos that are coming soon. I'll see you next time.